North St. Paul Matamidi, Zephyr head coach Wally Maldstrom has his team fired up for this one. Second quarter, Matamidi fourth and goal from the Polar Six. Brandon Joyce sacked by North St. Paul's Josh Griswold. And we go to the half scoreless. Third quarter now, Kevin McNamara taking it from 13 yards out. And Matamidi takes themselves a 7 to nothing lead. Still in the third quarter, Matamidi by the football again. Mike Lafum with the power run up the middle. Lafum taking it down to the Polar's 10-yard line, carrying tacklers along the way. Then, it'll be Lafum again. This time, he's going to cop up the football. The refs try to sort it out. Who gets it? It's McNamara who comes up with it on the bottom of the pile. The touchdown making it 13 to nothing in favor of the Zephyrs when they finally sort it out. Moving along to the fourth quarter, North St. Paul in the comeback, but it's McNamara coming up big on defense. He sacks Mike Cavallo to snuff the threat. Matamidi takes the football back. Brandon Joyce pitches to Lofboom. He's going to pass, and he hits Carl Smith, who's going to take it down to the four-yard line. Smith coughs it up, but another break for the Zephyrs as the ball goes out of bounds. That sets up Jared Ulrich from a yard out, and Matamidi goes on to beat North St. Paul tonight, 26 to nothing. After the game, Coach Malmstrom pleased by his team's performance. We came out in the second half and really took it to them. Uh, our defense is really tough. They've been starting for three years now, and uh, you could you could tell out here. They've got experience. They've been in big games. They know how to play tough defense. This one was a big one for me. I was happy when they called my number, and I just came out and ran right behind the big guys. They did it all for me. It was easy. I've always been fast and most uh, offensive linemen. Not quite as big, but I like to sniff out the quarterback, and that's my favorite play. Just get the sack, chase him down, and take him out. In St. Louis Park, third quarter action. This is Orno's Anthony Middleton taking it to the outside, and he's going to take it all the way down to the Red Knights' five-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds. Still in the same drive, it's Middleton again finding pay dirt, and Orno's down 14-6 following the missed point after. But back come the Red Knights. It's Ryan Mengelkoch on the reverse. He rumbles 25 yards for the touchdown, giving Vanille their winning margin in a 21-6 win over the Spartans. Now let's head out to Elk River for a Northwest Suburban showdown between the Elks and the visiting Blaine Bengals. First quarter, Blaine's second and goal. Patrick Williams sweeps in for his 7-0 lead. But Elk River responds. It's Elks QB Lucas Atkinson calling his own number from four yards out. And we're tied at 7-all in the first. But in a game of potent offense, Blaine has just a little bit more. This will be Ryan Parsons rolling out and hitting Steve Moore. No one is going to catch him. This one is going to cover 51 yards. 14-7 Blaine. Bengals go on to beat the Elks. Final score, 40-28. to Your final score. Staying in the Northwest Suburban, Anoka touching down in Maple Grove for a clash with the Crimson. Maple Grove down 16-3 until Mitch Brecky hits Greg Martin. 16-10 at that point, Anoka. Maple Grove gets it back. 20 seconds to play. Brecky to Andrew Lind. He slips a tackle, and it looks like he's going to go the dip distance. But watch this. Andy Terrasar with the game-saving tackle. Maple Grove with one final play. 14 seconds left on the clock. Brecky sacked. Anoka comes up with a big win beating Maple Grove tonight by a final score of 16 to 10. In that big game we told you about, Centennial and Tatino Grace, third quarter. Centennial quarterback Carl Nowakowski, Nowakowski hits Todd, still Todd for the touchdown. The point after ties the score at seven all. Later in the third quarter, it's Nowakowski again. This time again to Todd. This will cover 25 yards. The kick fails, but Centennial doesn't. They go on to topple Tatino Grace by a final score of 13 to nine. Well, I think it's exciting. We just couldn't run on this team. It's too good. And we, I think being able to throw the ball opened it up. And then I think our defense really played, sucked it up at times and got to play tough defense. And at the end right there, I think we were able to score, take the intentional safety and hold them. But it was a, it was a great win for our program, a great win for our kids. And I tell you what, I just, uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm kind of speechless. The Hutch has looked unstoppable this season, but tonight, Tony Mortensen's backward pass glances off Gene Doherty's hands. That's a live ball in the end zone. Doherty recovers, but Matt Simon's there for the safety, giving the Farmington Tigers an early 2-0 lead. Same score, second quarter. Mortensen hands off to Nathan Swift, and what an appropriately named young man. Swift goes 80 yards to score to the Tigers. Farmington, that is. 6-2 Hutch at the half. Uh, that's the Tigers of Hutchinson. They get pushed tonight, but Hutch comes through. They win by a final score of 22-9. Lakeville trying to survive a lightning strike at Eastview. Third quarter, Eastview's Evan Klefsas to Andy Casey. And that cuts Lakeville's lead to 12-7. Then in the fourth quarter, third and goal from the seven is Klefsas and Casey hooking up again. This puts the Ning in front, 13-12. Eastview adds a field goal, and they go on to eke out a 16-12 win at home.
to the Classic Lake. Red Hot Edina taking on surprising St. Louis Park. First quarter action. Edina runs a reverse that not only fools us, but bamboozles the Orioles as well. Watch Rick Crestus. Hurls a tackler, and then I'm sorry, 81, but uh, you really got deeked on that one. Crestus takes it in, 14-0 Edina. Second quarter now, it's Edina again. Rich Heeb takes it in from five yards out, 20 to nothing after the mixed extra point. The Orioles try to keep it close. Great individual effort here by Aaron Evans. Back to pass, feels the pressure. And he's going to try to make something out of it himself. Evans goes 40 yards. It sets up a touchdown, but this one is all Edina. The Hornets sting St. Louis Park. Final score, 56-14. In Roseville, the Raiders hosting White Bear Lake in a suburban East showdown first quarter. First play from scrimmage for White Bear Lake. That's Bear quarterback Jake Casey keeping it. He'll go 80 yards for the touchdown, and it is quickly 7 to nothing White Bear. Now, later in the first quarter, it's Jake the Snake again. White Bear, of course, operating out of the option. Nobody runs it better than Casey. He's going to keep it again, weaving his way through the Roseville defenders. This one will go for a little less than 50 yards, 13 nothing Bears. Still in the first quarter, Roseville quarterback Bobby Bonin fakes out our camera and throws to Will Williamson. This one covers about 40 yards, but tonight belongs to the Bears. White Bear cruises at Roseville. Final score there, 38-21 Bears. Game. You can sum up this pitch by Humboldt quarterback Alex Mason in two words, ill-advised. Harding's Fabian Dozier picks the pitch and takes it down to the Hawks' one-yard line. That'll set up perhaps the day's easiest touchdown. It comes from Marcus Wells' huge hole. Harding owns a 14-0 second quarter advantage. Wells would score again before the half. He goes left, drags a couple tacklers into the end zone. 21-0 at that point. Harding goes on to hand Humboldt the 33-0 setback. We start with Edison making a visit to Roosevelt High, a game that features plenty of defense. Edison Stephen Washington hit as soon as he gets the football, and it comes loose. Roosevelt's Patrick Rohde is there to cover it up for the Teddies. Second quarter, Teddy's with possession now. Stephen Cannon with some hard work between the tackles. Nice run by Cannon, picking up a first down. But as I said, this game was all about defense on fourth and short. The Tommies will stuff Roosevelt's Tim Zahn on their way to a 10-7 road victory. Let's check out the scores from the Minneapolis City Conference. This is first quarter action. SPA's got to kick it away. It's a high kick that somehow eludes Brex, Brandon Robinson, and the good hustle by Spartan Nathan Gringer results in a turnover, but that about does it for SPA highlights of this homecoming. Brex Marv Fleming moves the pile for a one-yard touchdown, and it's 6-0 Mustangs after the missed extra point. Later in the first, it's Brex Brandon Murphy with a nice run. Murphy will be stripped of the football, but not until after he's crossed the goal line. Liam O'Hagan with a big day, passing for 223 yards and a pair of touchdowns as Breck spanks the Spartans. Final score there, 44-16.